it starts at the beginning when Miss Kazan and Strasburg say to me, okay, you can go to California now, right. after three years, uh, being a guinea pig at the actor's studio, so to speak. And um, when I went, Gadge said to me, you know, the first thing you'll do is uh, westerns, a lot of westerns. Right. And you'll be the third to fifth cowboy from the right. Be the most interesting goddamn third cowboy anybody ever saw. <laughs> so as you go on in your career and the parts get a little bigger and a little yeah. bigger and everything, you tend to embroider. Sometimes it works in ads and sometimes it doesn't. And I was guilty probably of pushing a little too hard. So that doesn't mean overacting. That means just, uh, I'm in the room too. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I might be interesting. Yeah, right. take, take a look. Right. Yeah. So, what was the biggest role of your lifetime? This one. Number it, it really is. Oh, number yeah. one. Oh yeah. Um, number one. It's an Alexander Payne movie. He yeah. may not be synonymous with that yet, but as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, he's six for six. He's made six pretty good movies yeah. in a row. Right. Secondly, um, he's basically the linchpin of the movie. He drives the movie a certain way because the story kind of follows him. But right. it's a teamwork movie. It's all of us together. I mean, that's behind the camera, too. I mean, he's got 85 people on the crew, and 47 have worked every day on every movie he's ever made. So you have a family. Yeah. You don't dare not risk. You don't dare not take chances because they're there to back you up. He told me the first day, Go out there on the edge, stay there every day like you like to do, and we got your back. And then he's sitting right here, not way over there at a monitor, right here, yeah. and he gets the light out of watching the movie for the first time. He's seeing the scenes he knows they work on paper. So he sits there sometimes like a little kid, just <laughs> watching the movie. So to say, yeah, that worked, didn't it? I yeah. thought it would, but it did. Yeah, it was, and also the piece of material was magnificent. I've been in others. I mean, uh, you know, people say, well, you mean it's a better chance than in Gatsby? My problem with Gatsby has always been, I don't think Mr. Fitzgerald ever wrote it to be a visual experience for an audience. An example being, how do you put the last paragraph on a screen? Right. Can't be done. Right. And I, I'm sure Mr. Salinger was up to the same thing. They're about the reader's mind, the reader's heart. And when you put it on the screen, um, I don't know, sometimes it's like very rarely, only till the last maybe quarter of a century have they ever put Christ's face on a screen. Mm. You know, he was always, you couldn't see who he quite was. Mm. And one of the great stories I, I've heard in my career, well, I'm wondering, you want to ask questions? I'm sorry. No, no, go uh, ahead. I want you to go ahead. Uh, Charlton Heston told me when they were doing Ben-Hur, they came to a scene, William Wilder shut the movie down for two days to look for a face. He spent two days, he saw 1,300 faces in Rome, where they were right outside where they were shooting. And he finally picked one. And in the scene in the movie, uh, it's a Roman centurion who rides up and uh, Heston on his way, Ben-Hur on his way to the chain gang is stopping at a well for water. The centurion hates him. He cracks his whip. A man bends down and starts helping Heston get a drink of water with a goblet and kind of washing his face a little bit. And the centurion cracks the whip again. And he said, I said no water for him. And he gets the thing back again. And the man stands up and turns around. And William Wyler wanted to cast an actor who could show he just looked into the face of God because it's Jesus Christ that gives him the water. And that's movie making. That's what yeah. I came for.